What's up, everybody? Dr. Vong here, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. You knew that. I want to hear talking about this new freaking South African variant of the SARS CoV 2 virus. We got to get our terminology right because this shit's getting crazy up in here. Who thinks it's getting crazy? I'm going to break down the science uh for this new south african variant we're going to look at the actual genetic structure the protein folding structure like we did last time with the uk variant um i'm going to have another physical example to kind of show it to you maybe make you understand it help help you understand it better and then also i'm going to talk about why i think it's uh worse okay if you're watching this on the replay fast forward to the five minute mark and um at that point i will start the broadcast uh in about so for the next five minutes or so, hang on tight, everybody. Let's say hello to some people. Where are you guys watching from? Ramon from Bakersfield, California. Hang on tight. If you don't like this part, just come back. Lisa Camac waiting for you. How are you doing? Hey, Valerie. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Nicole Hoover, what's up? We're going to talk about this South African variant. All right. It's going to be crazy. Montreal, Quebec. What's up? John Clark. How's it going? Y'all give my buddy John Clark a follow. He's an awesome dude. Donna Mail, what's up? Where are you guys watching from? Where are my international people? All right. Heather Rochelle, my assistant, my helper, my friend, my buddy. All right. She helps out every now and then. Volunteers. Get some shit. <laughs> Mindy, Ashton, Oregon. Awesome. What's up, everybody? Joss, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit the button, okay? And see who pops up. All right, John Clark, Indiana. Oh, that's random. Okay. Uh, Poochie Paints from Wyoming. <laughs> Marie Moore, Sacramento, California. Come on, everybody. Cincinnati's in the house. Lori Downs. That's awesome. I know my hair is a mess. <laughs> COVID hair, everybody. <laughs> Ta Talaya, Francois, Berkeley, California. Mumbai's in the house. Look at that. All right. Lori Plum from Iowa. Oh, Pakistan, really? For reals? Come on. Thank you for the hit and share button, everybody. We got about two more minutes and then we'll get started. I'm going to drink some tea. Let me show you something real good. Real good. What's up, Helen? How's it going? How are you doing? So I, I have this Bob Ross mug right here. I got uh, my girlfriend for her birthday, but it's really my cup. It says, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And it's a mug that turns black. It's black. And then when you put hot beverage in there, it, the painting in the back reveals. I'll show it to you here in a little bit. This is um, some rose, rose green tea. What's up, Christina from Canada? Milwaukee's in the house. Oh, good Lord. The Cleveland Browns. I think they're in the playoffs. Way to go. All right. Hard facts. Two more minutes, Paul. We're going to get some hard, hard facts. Roy, Oklahoma's in trouble. Roy, Arkansas, number's not looking good. Where's Apollo Beach, Star? I like that name, Star Ann. I had a friend named Star back in college. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know it. The Bob Ross is the shizzle, I'm telling you, man. Charles Brunson looking tough there. There you go, Julia. Oh, Julia, where'd you go? Flew up. Julia from Australia is watching. There you are. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for watching Australia. Lexi, Kentucky, Denise, what's up? All right. England. Dude, you guys are worse than the United States, man. So do me a favor. Hit the share button, everybody. Let's get going. You know, we just get some more people in here. We got a thousand people watching on all the platforms. Let's see what we have. All right. Hopefully all everything's working here. Okay, cool. Excellent. All right, San Antonio, Salem, Fayetteville. What's up, Bobby? Iowa. Oh, there we go. Esther. Ether? Is that Esther or Ether? Ether? <laughs> Sydney. I like Sydney, Wayne. All right, so everyone check out my Bob Ross. There we go. Bob Ross mug. AC, thank you for sharing, AC. Look at that. Thank you. If you hit the share button, let me know. I'll put up your name. All right. AC in California shared. Oh, wow. Thailand's in the house. We're going to get started in 30 seconds, everybody. 30 seconds. Arizona. Arizona is a hot fucking mess, Raina. It is a hot mess. Okay. Sheila. Thank you for sharing, Sheila. I know where Conroe is. I'm here in Houston. Oh, check it out. Miriam Perry. 
from Ireland. Nice. Oh, Talia, thank you for sharing. I got you up twice. See? Hmm. Peyton Moore shared. Thank you, Peyton. Rebecca is watching from the Virgin Islands. Mary Ryder over there in Canada. Thank you for sharing. Pamela, thank you for sharing. Wow. Thank you, guys. Shelly. Oh, Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, Shelly. <laughs> oh, New Brunswick. Thank you for everybody who hit the share button. Oh, Lisa Kamek. Out of Helen Lowe. Melbourne. Miriam Kane shared. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Heather Yates shared. Gotcha, Heather. Oh, boy. Shared in Kansas. Melissa Whitcomb. Wow, this is great. Oh, we're at almost six minutes. Let's get started. I lost track of time, man. All right, let's go. As always, I will edit this down and put this um, on my YouTube channel. Thank you, guys. I won't do the diploma thing. Y'all, I better if I can get it. We're gonna get some science. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Doug Vaughn. Here's my residency diploma from graduating residency in 2005. I'm a surgeon, bariatric surgeon. Um, I talk about COVID because it affects my following, the obese population, as you know. Uh, real quick, uh, the other day on my Facebook fan page, let me put that up for you real quick, by the way. My Facebook fan page, that's usually where I'm most active. I'm going to start being really more interactive also on YouTube. So if you like YouTube, look for me to do some posts and things there. Uh, but the other day on my um, Facebook fan page, I put up this uh, pulse oximeter. This is $17, guys. Problem is the ones that you guys get in the hospital that they use, they're a couple hundred bucks. So these cheaper ones that are, you can get these on Amazon. Uh, they're not very reliable for the most part. So one of the things that I did was there's an article. I looked it up and there's an article that kind of breaks down six really in a, in, inexpensive pulse oximeters. And this one tested really well. So this is one of the two that actually tested really well. It's uh, pretty accurate. I, I got my shipment in today. It comes with this little carrying case. Uh, I'm just telling you, I'm not selling it. Shit. I don't know, you know. And it's very simple. You turn it on. Okay. Just by hitting that button. And then you, it's like Pac-Man, wonka, 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 bloop, 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 wonka, 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 wonka. And all you do is you put your finger, now listen, ladies, I love you, but no fingernail polish on, on your fingernails, okay? And no like uh, fake nails either. You want your real nails. You're just gonna put your, your finger, you see that little um, inside there? There's that little scanner space inside there. You want your finger to cover that. So no, so don't be out here cover up that little that center so all the way in like that i'll do that one more time all the way in and you just chill and you want to, oh man i took so long it, it didn't turn on okay and you're just gonna sit here and chill I'll, I'll hold this up for you guys okay here we go all right so the top number that 84 is my heart rate it's going kind of fast normally i'm about 65 so i'm i'm, I'm yanked up for you guys and the bottom one is my oxygen saturation when it goes up in like 98%, okay? And um, if you have COVID, a lot of times the right now with the way the hospital systems are, they are going to send you home and they're going to tell you to get one of those pulse oximeters. This is a good one. I'll hold that up again because it's relatively accurate, okay? Um, I'm not getting paid. There's no sponsorship. You can find this on, um, on Amazon. Screenshot, screenshot that. Yeah, man, I need sponsorship dollars. Just kidding. So 17 bucks, it was tested on a, a paper that's published in PubMed. And that's why I like it. Okay. And that 99 there at the bottom, that's my oxygen saturation. So they're going to tell you to go home, monitor your oxygen level. If that level, we get really concerned when this level, the bottom number gets below 90. That's, you know, hypoxic. You're, you're not doing so good. A lot of people with um, COPD, things like that, really bad lungs, they sometimes live in the 89, 90 region. So that's why, one of the reasons why this um, COVID is real bad, couldn't be bad for you. Now, it automatically shuts off. So all you got to do is really just take out your finger and this will shut off. All right. So check that out. I hope that was useful for you guys. And I only show you that because it was tested. And... Um, I also was asked by a viewer about thermometers, the infrared ones. So I, I also went to PubMed, looked that up to see. And the, the gun ones, the infrared ones, where they, they don't, the contactless ones um, are very inaccurate. 
So if you don't want the best one is actually the rectal one, which I know Uncle Billy likes the rectal ones. OK, I know. I know he likes those. But um, the tympanic membrane ones, the ones you put into your ear is um, not very uncomfortable. I mean, well tolerated and works really, really well. So a couple of things to um, keep you safe during this. It will actually won't keep you safe. It will help monitor you during the, uh, throughout this process. Thank you guys, everybody, for watching. Uh, okay. Today, I am going to talk about this South African variant. There's not much in the news about it. And you guys um, are really hearing it kind of first here. Okay. Uh, I will preface this by saying that um, a lot of the things um, is TBD, to be determined. Um, this virus is constantly changing. Okay. And I want to summarize things real quickly for you guys. I did a video a week ago uh, on actually a few days ago on the UK variant. Uh, please go back and find that one on the YouTube channel and check that one out. Uh, it will cover, go into more detail, some of the things I'm about to talk about. I want this one to be a little bit faster. All right. Um, so viruses mutate. What actually mutates is the genetic material, all right? So the, um, you, you have a family of viruses. That's the family. Coronavirus is the fucked up family. <laughs> Inside that family, you have strains of viruses, strains of the coronavirus that causes disease. It has to cause a specific disease to be called a strain. So this strain is SARS-CoV-2. It causes COVID-19. There's another strain. It's, it's nasty cousin. Um, SARS-CoV-1, which causes like SARS, which is the first one. And then there's a, a strain that causes like MERS, the Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome. All right. So uh, in the family, there are strains. The strain we're talking about is SARS-CoV-2. We say coronavirus for short because that's kind of the pandemic right now, but technically it's SARS-CoV-2. And then each one of these strains can mutate because the genetic material mutates and they develop variants. There have been thousands of mutations. So this one SARS-CoV-2 has over 15,000 different mutations. So don't panic about the mutations. A mu most mutations don't mean shit. Nothing happens. They don't end up being anything. But when a particular mutation causes a change in the protein, in this case tonight, we're going to be talking about the spike protein. When it causes a change in the protein and that change has an effect it becomes a variant okay uh and it lasts so it might not lead to any sort of different clinical outcomes that's tbd to be determined um but the two the uk variant and now the south african variant seem to be um seem to be lasting and propagating and causing problems. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about their transmissibility, right? So both of these variants, the UK variant and the South African variant, first of all, they're only named that because that's where they were first identified. Now it's very possible. It is very possible that like the UK variant started in the United States and somebody went from the United States to London and spread it over there. And because London, because UK does more genomic testing on the coronavirus, uh, they, they test about 10% of their cases. Uh, they just happened to discover it there. Kind of shitty for them, but that's just the way it is. But if you look at what's happening with um, UK right now, per capita, they actually are higher than the United States. So even though fucking Americans were at 200,000 cases a day, UK is about 60,000 cases a day per capita. They are much higher than they are higher than the United States. So they just rightfully so enacted a very strict nationwide lockdown till mid February, which might be extended because of what's happening with this UK variant. All right. Um, so what I want to do is a couple, um, I, I hope you guys are finding this, this interesting, uh, but a couple of things I want to say is number one, and I'm going to do a couple predictions real quick for you guys. Um, all right. So right now, the UK variant is, you know, less than 1% that we're aware of, less than 1% 1, 1 of the cases in the world. 
And by March, I think the UK variant will become the dominant um, variant in the United States. It'll be the dominant coronavirus. When we talk about coronavirus in the United States in March, I'm going on record, bitches, on Ma in March, um, it will be, we will be talking about this UK variant. It'll be the dominant one. Why? It's, uh, we've identified it in four states already. Colorado was first, California, Florida, yesterday, New York, uh, which means it's everywhere, okay? So we just, we in the United States don't do the, t the testing that UK does. If we had tested it more often, um, then, you know, we're more, more likely to find it, but it will become the dominant uh, variant in the United States. It doesn't seem to show um, any worse outcomes. It doesn't kill you more. It's not more virulent. It's it, it's not worse illness. In fact, I, I talked about that in my video about the UK variant, which is that viruses, the more transmissible they become, usually the less lethal they are because they're trying what virus, well, I shouldn't say that because viruses aren't alive, so they don't actually try to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, this is what's really fucking cool about viruses. It's just all random chance. It is basically a piece of DNA, either DNA or RNA, wrapped in a fat droplet and floats around the air and has replication machinery built into that. That, it just so happened that little piece of genetic material has the replication machinery built inside of it or some form of it that allows it to replicate it's bizarre. It's not technically alive, uh, which is bizarre. So put a one in the comment section. If that was kind of like eye opening to you guys, like if you're like, what viruses aren't alive, they're not bacteria. Bacteria is alive. Um, but viruses are not alive, not technically living. So they don't try to do anything. They don't try to kill you. They don't try to mutate. They don't try to survive. So put a one in the comment section of that is surprising to you guys. That's awesome. Because the idea is that it's just all purely random chance. It's pretty fucking crazy, right? So a lot of ones coming in there. That's awesome. I'm glad to bring you some, some fun discussion. Okay. So, so random chance happens because you're talking about millions of numbers of rep, millions of replications. So it's happening over and over and over and over again. And the mutations, the, the mistakes, it's a random mistake in the replication of the virus. It causes mutations and probably every single replication of a virus um, has a mistake in it. Imagine if humans had mistakes, man, we'd be all like, ah, <laughs> we would have died off or well, we'd be superheroes. I don't, I don't know one or the other. Um, but, um, so, so mutate, so viruses mutate. Don't be alarmed. The only, the difference is when it becomes a variant, we have to carefully observe it to know if it's going to cause an effect. And we don't know if it's going to cause an effect. Does that make sense um, at this point? Okay, so let's jump into the science. Who's ready to jump into this 18 minutes into this fucking thing? <laughs> it's going to be short. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to share with you my screen again. And um, uh, okay, so let me hit share real quick. And there is a website I want to take you to. Excellent. So y'all can see that now. Okay. So there was this paper in Caprissa, the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa from a professor, Salim Abdul. Uh, and this is December 18th, guys. So this is, you know, uh, four weeks ago, basically. And there, he's talking about the second wave of COVID cases. I hope y'all can see my marker here, COVID cases going up here. And we know now that it's much higher, right? So even since um, the uh, last time I checked, um, South Africa had like 14,000 cases yesterday, 14,000. But what I want you to see is this right here. Look at this second wave. Here's the first wave comes up and goes down where well, they are way past that first, uh, that's, that uh, first wave now. And this is December 18th. So we are in a lot of trouble, okay? And you can see right here, the second wave, it is taking off like a skyrocket compared to this first wave. 
very frightening. This is what we're seeing in Africa. The UK variant we know a lot about because um, you know they it's, it's been around a lot longer. South Africa is a little bit more isolated, so you can see these numbers uh, in cases going up. That's really bad. Okay, um, so it appears. Uh, this is what I said. Viruses evolved to become more to become more transmissible and less severe because they they need to come to a balance with a host. They can't kill off their host. All right. Second wave now in all provinces with some early signs of it spreading faster than the first wave. This is December eighteenth. All right. Now, okay. Um, so here's the thing about this variant. It is called the five hundred one dot v two variant. And it has three mutations. This is the stuff that's really scary. This is why I'm saying you need to pay attention. The three mutations are at, at uh, location 417, 484, and 501. A K to N, E to K, and N to Y. And we talked about the N501Y with the British, the UK variant. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this. So pay attention to this. This could be associated with a higher viral load. This is not good. All right. What should we do? Basically says we don't know. All right. So uh, that is an actual paper uh, and project from uh, a, a doctor in South Africa explaining the, the variant. All right. So uh, number two, uh, the I'm just going to say SA, South African variant, has three binding mutations okay um who remembers how many mutations uh did the uk variant have in the binding area in the spike protein binding area the uk variant had one okay this south african variant has three mutations in the binding area remember the carnations i did there was one binding area one area that just hit, hit the receptor that made it more sticky stickier <laughs> um, to the to the ACE two receptor. Well, this South African variant has three. It has other it has other mutations also. It has more mutations, but the mutations that matter. I'm talking about the mutations that matter is actually in the binding area. This is not good. All right. Um, yeah. Exactly. So uh, I want to share back my screen. Okay. I want to go back to my favorite website <laughs> for viruses. <laughs> Who remembers my favorite website for viruses? <laughs> That's right. We're going back to Jizzade. So, swear to God, it's called Jizzade. Okay, so right here, <laughs> Jizzade. It's the global initiative for sharing uh, avian influenza database. So, so I looked it up. I, I remembered. Okay. So uh, here, some this uh, the researchers uploaded the information on this variant five hundred one. V 501 Y um, V2. Okay. Triple spike receptor binding site substitutions. That's not good. Okay. Um, to date, what I was talking about that the um, SARS CoV 2 has gone over, fi has 15,000 mutations. In South Africa alone, it, it has 2,730 mutations. This one is called 501 Y.V2. All right. And the three mutations in the spike receptor binding site, K4017N, E484K, and N501Y, okay? Now, if we look down, these are all the different mutations. Remember, we saw the gray the uh, mutations here. It's listed here at the bottom. But the gold ones are the ones that we were really concerned about. And remember, the spike protein is a trimer. There's actually, it's one protein Three, three copies of one protein that have wrapped around each other, right? I had three carnations wrapped together. Okay. Now, if you remember the UK variant, there was one change, one change on the end. Okay. One of these uh, N501Ys. Now if, we, now, if we scroll over, let me blow this up to this side right here. We're looking at the spike protein. This part down here is a spike protein from the side, this green wavy line right here, y'all see that? That green wavy line is the um, ACE2 receptor. That is the binding cell, the receptor uh, in, in the lungs where it attacks. 
Now I had this question after my last video. There's, we have ACE2 receptors in other places of our body, like our blood vessels, for example, other than just the lungs, okay? Uh, but they're predominant in the lungs. And so it binds here. Now look at this son of a bitch. This South African son of a bitch, not only has the N501Y, this is of the UK variant, this is it here. Motherfucker also has a substitution at 484, E484K here and K1417N here. So it's got three binding mutations, guys. Three binding mutations. Okay. This is problematic. Now, before you lose your shizzle, <laughs> don't lose your crap just yet. But, um, we don't know yet if this will lead to a difference in out in the clinical course. The only thing that really matters with this, with these mutations is, does it affect the host? Like what's it going to do? Okay. Um, so number three, um, the SK, I'm just calling it SAV. The South African variant, uh, has more, it's called affinity to binding. Okay. With these three new mutations in the uh, binding regions, it has more affinity to binding. All right. Now that, um, let me go back to sharing back to my screen real quick. Are you guys liking this? Is this interesting or not really? You want me to go back to cussing out Uncle Billy? <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. What I want to tell you, so, so, all, so this picture here, okay. Oops. Okay. This picture here is the entire spike protein. All right. Now, uh, this region right here is called the re RBD, receptor binding domain. This is the actual dom domain. And that mutation is that mutation area is called an RBM, receptor binding motif. So this huge area here is the RBD, receptor binding domain. And the actual little changes right here, the place where they're changed is called the receptor binding motif, RB, uh, RBM, okay? So I just wanted to throw that in there. So what's actually changing is the receptor binding motif. Now that is really screwed up. <laughs> and let me show you explain this in a way that hopefully will help you understand it a little bit better. So I went into my toolbox. <laughs> I'm currently about to move. So I pulled out my ratchet set, right? So imagine this is the spike protein. <laughs> All right. And technically speaking, there would be three of these wrenches. All right. These are called socket wrenches, by the way. All right. And there would be three of them kind of together. That would make the spike protein. I didn't have three socket wrenches. I only have one. Okay. Now this would be the RBD receptor binding domain. This little socket itself is the receptor binding domain. Okay. Now, if you look inside there, let me see, you see how they're like these little turn, like these little grabby bits. You see that? Cause that's how it grabs the, the, the bolt. Okay. Each one of those little grabby bits, you could consider that as the RBM receptor binding motif. So these little, it's these little, uh, binding, uh, the motifs inside here that have mutated. Okay. So, um, pretend like this is your lung cell. This is your ACE2 inhibitor. And here comes the coronavirus, right? Dr. V's a coronavirus. Here I come. I show you my spike protein, right? And blink. Oh, some a bitch. See? Like that. And, oh, I like you. I like you. And because, because I've made changes to this internal side, I've mutated. I've changed. I've changed this RBM inside. It fits better. Oh, shit. And now it, that virus hooks into and gets into the cell more efficiently. Was that helpful? Give it up for my sockets, everybody. Woohoo! <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to school, become a science teacher. I don't know. 
<laughs> All right. So that's hopefully that will help you understand what we're what we're talking about when we're talking about spike mo protein mutations and things like that. Hopefully that was helpful. Was that was <laughs> helpful, TW? Uncle Billy, pay attention. Wake up, Uncle Billy. Yes, yes. See. Um, awesome. Awesome. Good. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Dr. Socket. Awesome. Okay. So, um, yay for the sockets. Yay. Okay. So check out my coffee, my coffee mug. This is actually green tea. The see Bob Ross. It, it's black. And the picture reveals when you put in hot liquid. So I'll pour in some hot tea here in a second. Okay. Now, why is this important? Because if you're watching the news, hopefully you're not watching the news, they throw out words like mutations and strains and people use the word strains wrong and variants wrong. And, but now you, since you watch Dr. V, you're smarter than average, right? You're smarter than the average viewer. So you kind of really understand the mutation in the South African variant is in the RBMs, re receptor binding motifs, okay? Inside the, it's not the socket, that would be the, all right, let me try this again. This whole thing is the spike protein. This socket part is the RBM, uh, RBD, the receptor binding domain. And inside of here is the RBM, the receptor binding motif, and that's what's mutated. The parts that we care about. Other areas have mutated, but that's the part that we care about. Okay, so why is this a problem? Number four. More efficient binding equals more. Here is the concern that I'm really worried about, okay? I'm really worried about, did I get it? Oh, I got it. The more efficient a virus can bind to its host cell, it gets into the cell faster. It's less likely to get knocked off. Remember things are floating around in there, right? Um, it gets, because for example, in your lungs, you breathe in, I breathe out. Um, that virus is having to struggle against that current. And it's, it's a strong current because small tubes, small airways. It has to be, it's like a bellows. Uh, if you, uh, for you guys up North with the chimney, right? You try to start the fireplace and that little device that, oh, I should bring my bellows. The tip of the bellows, is it big or is it small? No, it's small, right? But the bellows, the body of the bellows is big. So you pull it open, there's a bunch of air in there and, and you push down. Oh, I spat all over my laptop. <laughs> and the air goes out a very fine point. So, it, and you think it's only to direct the air, but that circumference of the opening of the bellows makes that air much more forceful. So viruses and stuff inside our, is this interesting? The viruses inside of our lungs, you know, they're trying to hold on when you're breathing, like, like you know, they act, they have to get from your airways into your bloodstream, you know, into your but into your pneumocytes, stuff like that. Anyway, so you get the idea. So they have to hold on. <laughs> so the more that they can hold on to the cell, the um, the better the chance that they can get into the cell before they're detected. I'm going to talk about vaccine. I should talk about vaccines tomorrow because this is important, um, you know, and in, because in people are getting nervous about antibody, antibody response. We need y'all to take the fucking vaccines, all right? Don't be fucking John Wayne. If your number is called, it's time for you to man up, Uncle Billy. Go take your fucking vaccine, all right? Um, and don't give me your bullshit about it's been rushed, you know? Well, you know, you, you couldn't even stay awake during, like, like, basic life sciences in eighth grade, and now you suddenly become a, a vaccine expert. Vaccine was rushed! It was not fucking rushed, okay? Delivery was rushed, was a short, short-cutted. You know, the the fundraising part, the monetary part was was um, was um, short-cutted, okay? I don't know if that's a word, but um, I forgot what I was gonna fucking say. Okay, so, <laughs> so the virus can get inside the cell, escape detection, and then replicate. And now if you're making more and more copies, you could get out and actually be in this airway here 
And it's possible that you'll cough or sneeze a larger amount of virus. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And it might be that that's the actual way that it leads to transmission is because there's it's a larger viral load because the virus itself has escaped detection because it's more efficient in binding, gets into the cells faster and causes its damage faster. And remember the cells die and they explode and the little baby virus is <laughs> my little baby virus. Is <laughs> We're free. Let us go. Let's go wreak some havoc. <laughs> and there's thousands of millions of these little fuckers. <laughs> right? So this is problematic. Now, having said this, um, I will say that to date, we don't know that it has any worse outcome. We do not think, the scientists, the people who are studying it, do not think the South African virus has any more lethality, no more illness. It's just that it seems to be transmissible. Now, what's the problem? Now, what's the evidence for this, right? The only way to really know if it's more transmissible is to actually grow, like swab a bunch of people's noses and grow the virus in a test plate and to see if you get more virus than a regular strain. Uh, uh, see, I fucked up the term, a, veg, a regular variant, okay? So, um, uh, but if you look at, at what happened in South Africa, South Africa, you know, you guys got hot back in June, you squashed it down, you went from 10,000 cases a day, you went back down to 500, 500 cases a day, and then what happened? Like something, the numbers started creeping up. Like you guys reflected what happened in Europe. When Europe was hitting their second, starting their second wave in October, you guys started, uh, South Africans started coming up too, right? So there's this idea that, okay, there might be something into this South African variant. And in fact, the people in South Africa believe that the vast majority of the coronavirus cases in South Africa are due to this new variant. So you kind of correlate the two, our, our cases, and I showed you the graphs at the beginning where the numbers were way higher. That means there must be some correlation to the transmissibility. So you're kind of deducing it. It's not really hard science. You're kind of deducing that. Same thing happened with UK, right? So this UK variant was discovered there in September and really started being studied in early December. December one, technically. And their cases, even though they did a kind of a spot hard lockdown, they tried to copy the American model. <laughs> Way to go, Boris, copy the Americans. <laughs> and um, and they initially went down and then suddenly they, like, you guys remember this? Like they were going down, all of Europe was going down. And then suddenly for some reason, UK was like, took a, like a left turn, like a detour, woo, <laughs> skyrocketed. And they're like, oh, we got this UK variant now. And then this UK variant, they think, makes up about 60. I mean, it's probably more than this. The last week, they were saying it's 60 percent, six zero percent of the cases in UK is now this variant. So I'm telling you that um, in America, by March, in March, the um, UK variant will be the predominant strain. Oh, I did it again. The predominant. SARS-CoV-2 in America by March. Right now it's not, but it will be, okay? Because of this transmissibility. Well, what about the South, South African one? You, you just got done telling us that, you know, there's three mutations and yada, yada, yada. Well, we haven't really found it in South Africa. The UK, I mean, in America. The UK one we know is in America, has also, is probably, um, is in over 30 countries. Uh, this South African variant, now that they're looking for it, it's in UK and I, and in, you know, God bless y'all. I love y'all. It's in the Australians. It's in Australia. And I think they found it in Japan. Can someone confirm that for me? I think it's in Japan, this South African variant. I know the UK variant is, but I think the South African variant is also in Japan. So it's not, the South African variant has not, has not been found in as many countries. In other words, the UK variant has a head start, <laughs> has a head start on his big brother. Um, now, the big question is this, all right?
Okay, this is the big question everyone's really worried about. And I want to answer this for y'all real quick. So if this has been helpful, really hit the share button for me. If this, if you, if this has been fun, educational, scary, but you know, I hardly cuss. I mean, that's worth a share right there, isn't it? Come on, I've heard, I've hardly cursed. You're good. So the big, the question that everyone's concerned about is this: um, Will the vaccines work on these two variants, the UK and the South African? And the answer is. TBD to be determined. Now the UK variant, they are almost sure that the vaccines will work on the UK variant. They are almost sure, right? The South African variant, TBD, to be de determined. They are not 100% sure. They don't exactly know. They think most likely, but to be determined. They have to do a few more studies on it. Good news. Here comes the cav. Here comes the cavalry. <laughs> okay, with this new technology, all right, there is hope, right? Because in the past, it would have taken years to develop these sort of vaccines, all right. But with this new technology and the new science and the new, you know, computers processing that we have now, we can tweak these vaccines. They can make small changes to the vaccine and the manufacturing process to, um, now you're, you're playing defense, you're waiting to see what mutations happen, you know, what, what, the vaccine, what the virus does. So then you're always on defense, but we can, the scientists can tweak the vaccines and ultimately science will win. Does that make sense? So I don't want you to panic about these variants. They don't seem to cause more lethal. They're not more lethal. They don't seem to cause any worse disease. And th the vaccines seem to work on them. And number three, number four is we can tweak the vaccines if we need to. We don't want to, but we can't. But number seven, I'm going to end it with number seven because number seven is really the most important thing. So most important. I mean, okay. And as always, I'll edit this down and put it on my YouTube channel. Okay. So let me ask you this question. You know, um, what causes mutations? Well, the virus trying to survive. No, I already told y'all the viruses aren't alive. They're not living. So they're not trying to do shit. What causes mutations is just chance. It's an error in replication. So every time the virus replicates, makes a copy itself, there's an error in the machine that makes a copy. It's like a Xerox machine. Have you ever used a Xerox machine and you keep copying the same, the same over and over again, the original and by the, you know, you've done it 500 times, the 501 starts to have like little specks on it. And you're like, well, you know, it's not as crisp. Okay. So, um, so, all right. So the things that cause mutation is random uh, replication, random errors during replication, which means what? The more viruses you have replicating, the more chance that's going to mutate. And this is number seven, why you're watching. No one's telling you this shit except for Dr. V because this is the truth. This is what's really important. We have to get the case numbers down, motherfuckers. This is ridiculous. It's not fucking funny. It's not a joke. It's not a hoax, right? The more virus, think about, Uncle Billy, pay attention. The more viruses you have floating out here, they're all fucking making copies of themselves. And the more of them that you have making copies, the more likely they are going to have errors. Ergo, the more likely they're going to mutate into worse and worse strains that cause problems, that evades our vaccines. Maybe you'll get one that is more lethal. Maybe you'll get one that is super highly transmissible. Maybe you'll get... I don't know, a six foot virus. Who fucking knows? Does that make sense? 
I'll do it again. You got a shit ton of viruses out here mutating like this. What are the chances that it's, I mean, replicating, what are the chances they're going to mutate? Very high. But if you got a couple of motherfuckers and they're trying to survive because you stayed at home, you didn't gather for New Year's, you, you didn't go visit your family, you stayed your ass at home, and the numbers are coming down. You have fewer viruses out there replicating themselves. You have lower chances of forming new mutations. Does that make sense? Okay. That's really the take home message, guys. For everybody who thinks like this is a hoax or I'm a fear monger or whatever. Get the fuck off my channel, first of all. I mean, can you put can you put a yes in the comment section for me if this has been helpful? Can you tag somebody who needs to understand this? Can you tag somebody and be like, dude, he's on point. This is great. It makes total sense, right? Jocelyn says it makes sense, right? Come on, Jim, Cheryl, yes. Yeses are rolling in. Awesome. So many yeses. See, that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I can explain shit. Now, I'm not here to just fucking do lives to get attention. I'm trying to add to the conversation. So if you feel like I add to the conversation, thank you. All right, check it out. So my Bob Ross mug. All right. <laughs> this is like the fucking virus. This is my Bob Ross mug. Okay? It's black. Because we didn't turn on the fucking lights. All right. If you don't turn on the fucking lights, Dr. V, you don't have viruses. If you don't test, you don't have viruses. If you don't turn on the lights, you don't have cockroaches, Dr. V. Don't you know? That's how we think around here. So what I'm going to do is check this shit out. This is going to be cool. All right. I got my hot tea. <clears throat> this is hot tea in here. So I'm trying not to burn myself. Check this shit out. Dump this hot tea into my Bob Ross mug. Now look, <clears throat> look at the background, y'all. This is testing. You need more testing. We need more genomic testing. Look at that. Now it reveals the background. You can fucking live in darkness if you want, motherfucker. But it's better if you face the fucking facts. There's a shit ton of viruses out there. COVID is killing people. You ignoring it doesn't mean it's gone. It's there the whole fucking time. It's there. Turn on the lights. You got cockroaches, man. Take the pregnancy test. You're pregnant. Go see a doctor, Uncle Billy. You got chlamydia. You're giving everybody in the church choir chlamydia. Ignoring it isn't going to make the drippy dick stop. Drippy dick. God damn it. <laughs> see, I was good up until that point, right? Come on, give it up for Dr. V. I was, I was, <laughs> I was good up until that point. But does that make sense? This is what happens. This is what, like, this is, we, we, can we slow down the testing, please? I told my people, can we please slow down the testing? What the, you, you, you got a laugh out of that, dude. You did that for a laugh and you, and 350,000 Americans have died. Give me a fucking break. Right. If, and, you know, if if Hillary Clinton had said it, I would have I'd be sitting here yelling the same fucking thing. So it doesn't matter the politics. Everybody understand. Doesn't matter the politics. It matters like where the shit, where the fuck it came from. Right. It's wrong, guys. We have to test more. We need to stay home. I wish <laughs> I wish this coffee mug had like a bunch of like fucking zombies on the back or some shit like ah, there's fucking zombies out there. Then you would know. All right. <laughs> I've had enough fun. This is a socket wrench talk. Uh, um, the Bob Ross <laughs> mug talk. The drippy dick talk. <laughs>
get tested. As always, I will edit this down, put it up on my YouTube channel. Hopefully this has been helpful for y'all. If you need some COVID rapid tests, I put these kits together and let me pay some bills real quick. Just message me. These are $50 each. Normally they're five for 500, $100 each. They're $50 uh, each 20, um, this weekend, a minimum order of 20. So that's a thousand dollar investment. You take it at home, results in 10 minutes, no special equipment needed. It's just like a pregnancy test. You just read it to know whether or not you have it. I'm also looking at these um, nasal antigen tests. I just I just don't want to stick shit up my nose. All right, so just message me on facebook.com slash Dr. Vong and say 20 for $1,000 so I know that you want that. You test yourself at home and that's what I do, guys. I test myself every 10 to 14 days now that I know coronavirus is everywhere. I really test myself every 10 days. I pretty much stay home. I go to FedEx to ship off my tests and the bank and not even really to the grocery store. And um, that's it. I don't go out. I mean, I go walk around my neighborhood. I wear my mask when I walk. Um, I do. It could, only because it's everywhere, guys. You know, you sound like it's weird, but it's, it's true. You got to do that. All right. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for all of... Um, yeah, thank you, Sonia. Thank you guys for all of the uh, uh, the comments here. All right, um, I'll do a Q and A again. Uh, nope, not not the Binax, right? Um, zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that's right. It's everywhere. Okay, be safe, be kind, take care of each other. I'll be back tomorrow. I think if there's something new development or something clever I can think of. <laughs> Fucking guy, love Bob Ross. You gotta like a guy who loves Bob Ross. I mean, come on. You know what surgeon likes Bob Ross? This surgeon. Come on now. Y'all be good. All right. Be kind. Uh, you know, screw you, haters. Bye, guys. <laughs>